Hello friends, welcome back to Mule S Academy. In today's session, we are going to talk about a very basic and very important concept called static IPs in Cloud of 1.0 or Cloud of 2.0. Okay, so always uh, the question comes to our mind, right? How do I set a static IP from uh, my Cloud of application for my Cloud of application? How do I know what my static IP is, right? Can I modify my application that is assigned to a static IP? In what situation could my you know static IP will get changed? Can I request a specific static IP, right? So let's first talk about why I am talking about static IPs today. Okay, so I had a scenario, one scenario where I had an application which was deployed in Cloud Up 1.0. Okay, so let's say this is the application deployed over here. Okay, and my application was trying to access a target system. This target system could be your uh, a database, could be your FTP, could be your legacy system, any legacy system where you are trying to access. Okay, now this a target system is only allowing a traffic which is whitelisted over here. Okay, so IP addresses will be whitelisted over here and only that traffic can go inside. So my traffic, my cloud of 1.0 mule app, which was trying to access this DB, that traffic was getting rejected at this door here. So now my challenge is how do I whitelist my IP address of my, my mule app IP address? from where the traffic is getting generated for this DB, how I, how I supposed to whitelist over there. So challenge was for whitelisting, I need a public IP address. Okay, so I need a public IP. Now, if I go and look for public IP, so I can get the public IP of this particular app, which is running over here. And that we know that in cloud up, whenever you deploy app, that app will get two IP addresses. One is public, one is private. This public IP associated with your public URL. This is public IP. And this private is associated with the private mule worker URL. Private URL, I would say. Okay. And the template, we'll talk about this, how the template looks like for public URL, private URL, and then, okay, I can get the public IP address associated with this public URL, and that public IP, I can give it to this particular uh, target system, and I can say whitelist my, my public IP address. But the challenge is, if I tomorrow change something on this app and redeploy it or restart, this public IP address is going to get changed. Now, again, I need to go and tell, oh boss, my IP address got changed. You go ahead and update your whitelisting list. Okay. That I, 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 it's not allowed. Okay. It's, we, we keep on updating IP address. This system is not going to allow me. Okay. Now, what is the option for this? Yes. In cloud up 1.0, we can go ahead and we can assign a static IP for this app. Now, what is a static IP? Okay, from where it is coming? Okay, that's the question. Okay, can I get a specific static IP for this particular app? Okay, all these questions will answer in a, in a moment. Okay, now we'll take, so I think hope this scenario is clear. If I have a app deployed in cloud 1.0, okay, to identify my outgoing traffic, Okay, there is no provision over here. So I need to go and assign static IP to my app. That means the static IPs will get assigned at app level. Okay, now same scenario we'll check. So now let's say new runtime plane is you know, introduced recently, which is our cloud of 2.0. So let's talk about this same scenario, how we can handle this scenario, same scenario where in my cloud of 2.0 private space, my mule app is running over here. Now, in cloud of 2.0, 
we have a provision to get the outgoing traffic IP addresses. Now, how that is possible? Now, these are all the traffic from private space is going via egress controller. Okay, so this is your egress controller. Now, all the traffic in cloud of 2.0 from the private space is going via egress controller and egress controller will be automatically assign some static IPs. Now those that or I can take those list of static IPs and I can go ahead and give it to this target system and whitelist. And these static IPs are fixed. These static IPs are not going to get changed. So very simple solution I have in cloud of 2.0. Okay. So I will get the egress controller static IPs and I will go ahead and whitelist over there and my traffic will be allowed in this target system. Okay. Now, how many static IPs will be allowed here uh, at the egress level? We'll discuss all, all those things. So let's look at the, the first question. So how do I set up static IPs for my cloud of application? So we need to first get the static IPs. The static IPs are not free. With the license, we'll get few. Let's see. Okay. So let's go to our AnyPoint platform. So let's jump into AnyPoint platform. Let's go to the access management. Let's go to the option called subscription runtime manager. If you go here, you will get with the license, we'll get the few static IPs and the number of static IPs is equivalent to the uh, is equivalent to twice of prod B core. So if I go and write simple formula, so if I if I wanted to say uh, the number of static IPs with base license, static IPs is equal to two into number of prod V cores. Okay, V cores. This is the formula. Okay, with the base license. Definitely, you can go ahead and buy more if your static IPs are you know exhausted. You can go ahead and buy more there is, there is a provision to buy more static IPs, but you need to pay okay so default we'll get twice of prod b course those many static IPs. now if you go at the cloud hub 1.0 level so let's go ahead and quickly deploy a simple application so we can take it application from the exchange itself example we'll take hello world application from here select this Select, I say, ch one hyphen hello hyphen world hyphen static IP hyphen ding. Okay, and we'll deploy this application inside our cloud. Okay. And we'll deploy it in US East Ohio. Let's deploy this. Okay. So now, once we deploy, once we deploy the application to our cloud of 1.0, what happens? So we'll get EC2 instance. Okay, now this static IPs will be coming from, if you wanted to know that, what is the range and all that, it will, it will be coming from AWS EC2 IP pool. Okay, so you need to contact AWS EC2 team and then, you know, get this information that what all these IP addresses coming from. So your static IPs, IPs will be coming from this pool, AWS EC2 IP pool. Now this EC2 instance will host your Mule app. So the, just now we have deployed one app, right? This will get deployed on this EC2 instance. This EC2 instance will get two IP addresses. One is public, okay? And one is private. Now, if you deploy this, this app under VPC, Right now, I, had, I didn't deploy that under VPC. So every VPC will have CIDR block. And this CIDR block is nothing but 
set of private IP addresses. So this private address will come from this CIDR block. And this public address will be coming from this AWS EC2, EC2 IP pool. Okay. So if, if I wanted to use a public uh, IP, then this is supposed to be a static IP. Okay, so right now we have we have not done this configuration assigning static IP in place of public IP because if you have to send the traffic that has to go via public IPs only. So static IP is also public, your public IP is also public. These are coming from this IP pool, AWS EC2 IP pool. Okay, so let's look at our application whether it's getting deployed. Yes, it's getting deployed. Now we'll get the dashboard okay so you just note down here once we deploy static ips one more one more information extra information will be will be you know uh, populated over here so we'll we'll talk about it later but now let's go to the settings now we have option called static ips here now see here here it says that you have two available you can use two static ips so now i need to say use static ips and say allocate static IP. So the moment I say allocate static IP, see here, new static IP is reserved. Now this static IP, nobody can use, but still it's not mapped to my, my application, okay? I can still say that release this unused IP, it will get released from here, but right now it's locked for this application. So when this will get assigned to my API, it will get assigned when I say apply changes. So before that, let's go ahead and look at this URL first. If I go ahead, go to my, my postman, if I say control V, okay. And uh, this application has path, hello world. Okay, so I'll go and I'll trigger this. I get output, okay. Now I can go ahead and this is basically, this is the URL of my shared load balancer. Okay, if I want to hit my mule worker, I just need to add, here, so let me quickly explain that. So if I go to my Jamboard, so the public URL and the private URL and one more URL which is visible here inside our, our runtime manager UI, this URL belongs to shared load balance. Okay, so if I go back here, the template of all these URLs, very simple, okay. so. First, it will come as app name dot region in whichever region you deployed it. And at the end, cloud of dot IO. Okay. This is what. Then you can use your, your resource partner. Now, this, this, this is a template of shared load balancer URL. Okay. Then the mule worker will get public URL and private URL. So public URL will be simply it will be mule hyphen worker hyphen the same thing. Okay, it will get appended over here. That will become a public URL of your mule worker. Second private URL, it will be extra string appended to this mule worker string hyphen internal. Okay, and hyphen same thing. This again, we can append it. So right now in the postman, which we are, we are running one URL, right? So I can go ahead and append a string over here that is called mule hyphen worker hyphen. If I trigger this, this is a public URL of my worker now. I can go ahead and trigger this. You'll be able to see. Uh, okay, so my bad, I need to add. If you're using the worker URL, you need to add your port number because you're bypassing your shared load balancer. So I'll say cancel this. I'll go ahead and I'll trigger it. I'll be able to see the output. Now, if I go ahead and if I say trigger the internal URL, internal URL won't be accessible from public internet. Okay. So it will, will be keep on sending request. After that, it will show, uh, it will throw error called uh, gateway timeout. Okay. So these are the URLs. Now we can go ahead and look at these URLs. Uh, actually, the IP address associated with this. So you can go ahead 
and go to your command line. Okay. And bring your command line over here. And always you can check what all you can run the command ns lookup and your host address. Now you can see here this is the IP addresses associated with this this mule worker and this is a internal IP address okay for now. Now if you wanted to see the IP address of the public URL just remove this internal from here you'll be able to see the public URL. So 18.190.158 this is a public URL which is coming from a public IP address which is coming from AWS EC2 instance EC2 IP pool. Okay. Now, if you wanted to see the, the IP addresses associated with our the shared load balancer itself, okay, you can remove this mule hyphen worker and you can see that. So always shared load balancer always deploys on you know uh, three workers. So you'll be able to see three public IP addresses. And this again, these are coming from AWS EC2 IP pool. Okay. So these are actually some public IP addresses and uh, some um mm, private IP addresses. But these IP addresses I cannot use for whitelisting because the moment I restart my application, the moment I, I uh, you know, uh, make some changes to my applications, this, this public address is going to get changed. So I won't be keep on changing this IP addresses at whitelisting uh, location, right? The target machine. So I need to have some, some solid solution for this, so the permanent solution for that. So what the permission permanent solution we are looking for? We are looking for static IPs. So one of the static IPs is reserved right now. Okay. And we have release unused option here. If you if you don't want to use this, you can release it. But right now I wanted to use this. Okay. So I'm going to assign now static IP to my, my application, which will be permanent for, for this application. When this will get changed, this will get changed when when I am I am actually deleting my application. Okay. When if I'm adding, uh, you know, uh, add new application by moving it from one environment to another environment, in that case, it will get changed. Okay. If I am, if I am, if I am going and uh, right now I have deployed in, if you remember, I have deployed in US E2. Okay. So if I change complete this region to, if I go to US East one, in that case, this, this static IP will get changed. Otherwise, if I if I do a small property change or redeploy my app in the same region, this static IP is not going to get changed. It will be always there with my app. Okay. Okay. Let's go and look at the how long it's taking. Okay. So it will be it will be it will get assigned. Now, if you go to the dashboard here, I was talking about one thing, right? See here. A static IP is getting mapped to my public IP address. So this is what we are we are getting in the command line. If we, if you if I let me minimize this and let me get closer here. So if you re remember the mule worker hyphen app name dot reason dot cloud up. So see 18.190.158. This is actually changed or mapped to this static IP now. Okay. So now this static IP I can go ahead and I can give it to the target system. Let me go back to my, my dash here. And now that static IP, I can use it here. So my traffic from my application will get allowed over here. Okay. Now, instead of, uh, if you, if you go ahead and remove this internal now, you can see that we are not able to send the request. Now, if I remove this, Okay, if I send this request, I'll be able to get the output. And if I go back and that public IP address, right, this one, if I copy this and instead of this URL, if I use that, that will also work. That is the public IP address. Okay, we'll use static also, but right now, see here, we are, we are able to get the output with the public IP address. Now I can go ahead and change this with uh, the static. 
uh, IP address. If I go back here, it's still getting deployed. If I go ahead in the static location, we can copy this. And via this address also, my application will be accessible, okay? So right now it's not mapped. Oh, it's mapped, perfect, okay? So this with this static IP also, I'm able to access my app. So this is how in cloud of 1.0. Now let's look at the cloud of 2.0, but before that, it's, it's getting deployed. Let's look at the log. In the log, one, one log you'll be able to see that is called applying static IP to your worker, okay? Now in future, if I redeploy this application, if I make the changes, the same IP will get associated with this app. Okay, we'll see that in a moment also, but let's go ahead and now discuss the cloud of 2.0, same scenario. Okay, let it redeploy, okay. In cloud of, cloud of 2.0, okay, in cloud of 2.0, I, I mentioned, so we'll be having private space and incoming traffic will be controlled by ingress controller, outgoing traffic will be controlled by egress controller. And both the guy will get the static IPs assigned. Okay, so let me show you that quickly. I have created a private space. Let me show you that. So this is my private space. If you look at my network tab here, okay. So this is a inbound static IPs. Okay, so my my uh, private space will always be uh, will be getting public DNS target and private DNS target. Now, in case of cloud of 2.0, quickly in nutshell, I wanted to say the static IPs will be allocated at private space level, no app level here. Okay, so complete incoming traffic will be identified by ingress controller and all those, those IP addresses are this one. So if you wanted to check, right, this public DNS target, if you go ahead and uh, if I use this, if I copy this and again go to my command line, and let's let's see what values we are getting. So if I say ns look up, and if I pass that publish DNS target, you'll see here all this. You'll see here eighteen dot one forty two. Yes, there third one. Three dot one dot nineteen. Yes, three dot one dot two thirty one. Yes, all three are a public and static IP addresses assigned to this public DNS target, okay? And this outbound traffic, uh, this outbound static IPs are IP, static IPs of egress controller. So egress controller will be there always, and that is this one, this line over here, okay? So now in that case, if I wanted to go ahead and whitelist, I'll be whitelisting which one? This this IP address. These are static IP addresses. I'll go ahead and I'll cop. I'll I'll uh, whitelist this. Now these are these. I mean, how many static IPs will will be assigned to your inbound uh, in, inbound static IPs list and outbound static IPs? List? This is based on the region and the availability zone. Okay, so the number of static IPs allocated to the formula for this guy. Okay, so the formula for static IPs in case of, so I'll go and create new new table is okay. So in case of CH 2.0, right, we'll be having ingress controller and egress controller, okay. Now both the guys will be getting number of static IPs. And this is equivalent to, or we can say based on, based on in which region we are creating this private space and how many availability zones are there. Okay, in which region and how many availability zones are there. Based on this, based on this, you will get those many IP addresses assigned to your inbound static IPs list and outbound static IPs list, okay? So if I quickly go ahead and 
if I wanted to show that it's not possible at app level in case of cloud of 1.2.0. So what we can do, we can quickly go here and uh, uh, try to assign one application. Okay. So go ahead and same application. We'll try to get it from the exchange again. We can go ahead, get it, and I simply say ch2 hyphen hello world hyphen static IP. Okay. I'll go ahead here. Now you can see that there is no option to assign any static IPs here. So runtime is there, ingress, ingress is there, property is there, logging is there, but there is no option to uh, assign any static IPs, okay? So in the cloud of 2.0, there is no option at app level. We need to handle that at private space level, okay? Now that my application is, is deployed, the previous one, okay? Just I wanted to justify myself. See now one entry is there, which is your mapping from static to public IP address. And if I go to settings, I wanted to uh, make one change over here. So I'll just say uh, in mu dot. In. I wanted to add one random property here and uh, say dev and I say apply. Okay. Apply change. So if I redeploy this, whether my static IP is getting changed or not, that is what my, my intention of adding that property. Okay. So now my, my answer is it won't get changed. Okay. It will be there as it is intact. So we'll wait for this deployment, but that's all from this session. We'll wait for this and we'll, I finally, I'll show you the one, one demo and then we'll, we'll, we'll conclude this session. You can see that application is redeployed now. And uh, we can see the same IP address is still intact and associated with the same application. Okay, so if I go to Postman now and try to hit that, I'm able to see the output. Okay, so this application is now associated with the IP static IP, which is will be there even if I redeploy my application, even if I change my properties, unless I redeploy this application or uh, delete this application. Uh, redeploy means in other uh, completely different region or if I delete this application then only this uh, static IPs will be uh, removed from this application okay so that's all from this session hope you liked it hope you uh, got the okay uh, before before uh, concluding this session so uh, let's go back to the the list of questions we we asked quickly and try to answer them Okay, so we know how to how to assign the static IP to our cloud of applications now. Okay, and that is possible only in cloud of 1.0. And how to know that what is our static IP? So once this assigned, it will be visible in our in our uh, uh, runtime manager itself. Okay, or we can go to the application logs and we can see that one log will be there. The static IP is assigned to our application. Can we modify our application? Yes, we can modify the application, but the assigned static IPs will be intact. So in which situation our uh, static IPs will get changed? So if we redeploy this application in different region altogether, or we delete this application, or we migrate it from the sandbox to the to other environment. In that case, this, uh, you know, uh, this will get uh, uh, changed. Okay, can we get the specific static IP? No, not possible. Okay, it will it will be randomly uh, assigned from the set of IPs we have in our license. Okay, and the final thing is we don't have option to remove the static IPs now. Okay, there is no option over here to remove the static IP. Only option is we can go ahead and uh, delete this application or redeploy this application to a different region. Okay. So that's all from this session regarding static IPs. Hope uh, uh, some of your doubt will be clarified or clear 
by uh, looking at this session okay so thanks for watching hit the like button hit the bell icon and uh, if you have any queries uh, you can drop in the in the uh, chat section thank you thanks for watching bye bye